Jay Quellen. No Jay Quellen here? Balake. Where is Balake at? A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is right here once again. Thank you for joining me again on this fine Saturday and welcome back to the channel. Real quick before I tell you what's happening in the Paul Haggis trial, I just wanna tell you guys, I'm gonna try something new. The comment on this video that gets the most likes is gonna get one of these gorgeous little Mike Rinder bobblehead dolls. These little bobbleheads, if you wanna buy one of these, you can go to the spshop.com. All of the proceeds from the spshop.com go to support the Aftermath Foundation. The Aftermath helps people who are escaping from Scientology and restarting their lives from scratch. Mike Rinder is one of the board members of the Aftermath Foundation um, along with me. We just ordered a whole lot more of these little bad boys and I promised everybody I would help promote them. So I'm gonna do a little giveaway and uh, if you don't win the giveaway, maybe jump over to the SP shop, see if you wanna pick yourselves up one of these. They're excellent Scientologist repellents. You got any Scientologists in your area, put one of these on display nearby, they will leave you completely alone. So that's enough about little mini Mike over here. Let's talk about real life Mike. Mike Rinder was in New York yesterday testifying in the Paul Haggis criminal trial. Now, Paul Haggis is best known as being a two-time Oscar winner, writer, producer, director. He won Academy Awards for Crash and Million Dollar Baby. He is also a former Scientologist. And in 2011, Paul Haggis very publicly left and came out of Scientology in, a, in an article in the New Yorker magazine. And at that time, put himself right at the top of Scientology's enemies list. And around that time, he said, look, these people, referring to Scientology uh, management, these people have long memories, they do not forget, and they do not forgive. And um, I'd be willing to bet that in a couple years or so, you're gonna uh, uh, find me embroiled in some sort of scandal that seems like Scientology has nothing to do with it. Well, that prediction turned out to be completely correct, and Paul Haggis has found himself embroiled in legal trouble and uh, criminal charges relating to alleged attacks on a number of women. And people have asked me why I haven't done any videos on this case, on the trial, on Paul Haggis' situation in general, and the answer is that I simply don't know Paul Haggis. I've met him once, uh, I didn't. I never met him when he was in Scientology. I don't know any of the people who are accusing him of anything, and I have no knowledge about the case that is different than what anyone else has read in the papers, and I don't know that it's really fair for me to give my personal opinion about any of this. And this is in contrast to the Danny Masterson trial, where in the Masterson trial, Scientology is the one who was involved in silencing these victims and preventing them from com coming forward. Where in Paul Haggis's case, if Scientology is involved, it's in drumming up the charges against Paul. And that gets into a much more speculative area, and speculation is just not particularly warranted coming from me in this matter. However, what is warranted is sharing what the news is reporting about what's going on and the testimony that's being given in his case. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So the reporting that I'm gonna share with you, this was done by the Daily Beast, by Dorian Geiger over at the Daily Beast yesterday. Headline, Mike Rinder tells court Paul Haggis is among Scientology's three biggest enemies. Paul Haggis' defense team called fellow former Scientologist Mike Rinder to the stand who testified that the director was among the church's most hated defectors. Prominent Scientology whistleblower Mike Rinder told a New York jury Friday how the million dollar baby writer emerged as one of Church of Scientology's top three public enemies following his public defection in 2009. Oh, okay, so I might be wrong. I said 2011 a moment ago and that might be wrong. Rinder testified Friday at the trial of director Paul Haggis, who's on trial for allegedly assaulting a publicist in 2013. The crash writer and fellow former Scientologist has long accused Scientology of fabricating the accusations in retaliation for publicly renouncing the controversial religion in 2009. Haggis's counsel questioned Rinder about various Scientology policies, including disconnection, auditing suppressive persons, plants, and fair game. The doctrine which dictates members retaliate by whatever means necessary against enemies 
or critics of Scientology. Who would the fair game tactics be aimed at? Tagus's lawyer asked. Anyone that was perceived as an enemy. In Scientology, the Scientology world, an enemy is someone who is doing insane things that Scientology believes hinders their ability to save all of mankind. So that could be someone who leaves and speaks to the media. It could be a reporter. It could be the IRS. There was a lot of enemies in Scientology, Rinder said. In terms of suppressive persons, does Scientology have a list or ranking of its biggest enemies? Uh, Zuckerman, I guess the attorney, asked Rinder. Informally, Rinder stated, and the informal enemies that you're aware of, where do you stand? Number one or number two, Rinder said. Who else is in the top three? Leah Remini and Paul Haggis, Rinder said. Rinder testified he was involved with hundreds of fair game missions in which he, along with other Scientologists, stalked, harassed, and intimidated suppressive persons and other enemies of the church. So guys, real quick, just as one piece of evidence or as a sample of Scientology's fair game policies, just put my name into Google, Aaron Smith Levin, and tell me what the number one result is. It's aaronsmithlevin.com, a website created by Scientology that went live the night my episode aired on Leah Remini, Scientology in the Aftermath. That is an example of Scientology fair, Scientology's fair game policy in actual practice. And the kind of lies and disgusting BS that they put on my website is nothing compared to what they've done to Mike Rinder. Just put Mike Rinder's name into Google and see the kind of stuff that comes up that Scientology has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, creating and promoting. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the search result you see from Mike Rinder is actually a paid ad. Do this, do that little experiment and let me know what you found in the comments down below. Uh, the article continues, I think this is still a quote from Mike Rinder. It is a policy that was written by L. Ron Hubbard in the mid 60s regarding the enemies of Scientology, where he said they may be injured, have their property taken, lied, tricked, sued, with no penalty for any Scientologist that engaged in those things. Rinder testified he routinely used plants or spies to influence and manipulate the church's critics, while simultaneously divulging how he too was routinely spied on, slandered, and physically attacked by Scientologists after leaving the religion. Haggis's lawyer showed the jury portions of the New Yorker article in which, so this is the article, and by the way, it was in 2011. Haggis left Scientology in 2009, but the article in the New Yorker about him was in 2011. And so Haggis's lawyer showed the jury portions of that article in which Haggis predicted the church would somehow seek revenge against him. These people have long memories, my bet is that within two years, you're gonna read something about me in a scandal that looks like it has nothing to do with Scientology. Rinder and Remini previously spoke out in defense of Haggis. We expect the next revelations about Paul Haggis in this campaign to destroy him, to be based on information culled from his Scientology files in the form of more anonymous accusers hiding behind a lawyer who will never have to disclose who is paying their bill they said in a statement. Remini, along with actress Susan Sarandon, are also rumored to possibly testify at trial. Haggis is expected to take the stand next week, his lawyers said. Now look, this quote, and they don't really say whether that quote was from Mike uh, Rinder or from Leah Remini, but this quote does serve as an example of why I have not felt it was appropriate for me to give any opinions about this case. Because if you look at this quote, it says, that the next revelations, that, that these things will probably be like basically picked out of his Scientology files and whatnot. And uh, th that leaves me to question, is the theory being put forth here that Scientology is, is using information that Paul Haggis has confessed to in his Scientology auditing sessions, and they ran around and contacted women that Paul had confessed to doing things to and is funding their lawsuit? Is that what's being um, proffered here as a theory? Or is the theory that these are manufactured charges? And I am not sure what the theory is really that's being put forth. Now, do I have information privately about what Scientology's efforts have been to dig up dirt on Paul, not just in their Scientology files, but in other in, from other industry sources. Yes, I have information about that. Do I have information about 
that specifically indicates these women's accusations are just manufactured and false. I don't have any information that I don't have any information about that. I don't have any information that goes, oh yes, I know these women are, are lying. So if the women are telling the truth, I don't think it's particularly relevant for me, to be, me to, be, to be doing videos saying, yes, but the Church of Scientology put them up to this. If the women are telling the truth, I gotta be honest, I don't really give a shit who, who put them up to it. Like it's either the truth or it's not. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's why I'm not doing videos on the subject. Do I tend to believe that Paul Haggis is innocent of these charges? Yes, I tend to believe that, but that's just a personal belief. It's not something I need to do videos about. I think you guys get the point. So the article continues on. In September, Honorable Judge Sabrina Krauss ruled that Haggis could argue that Scientology was behind the case. Haggis' attorneys have argued that Scientology manufactured the allegations and was bankrolling the case against him. During her opening statements last week, one of Haggis's attorneys described Scientology as a world famous criminal organization. Oh, you gotta just love that. We don't have to affirmatively prove that Scientology is behind this because we don't have the burden of proof here, said the attorney. But as you will see, the circumstantial evidence of Scientology's involvement here will be powerful. Haggis has long maintained the incident involving Breest was consensual. So this is what occurred on Friday. As reports continue to come out about this case, I will do videos about the reporting. That way I can share the information without giving a whole bunch of editorialization and just giving my opinion. That's what I really don't wanna do. So that's all I got on this for now, guys. Before I sign off, just yesterday I passed 90,000 subscribers. I'm trying to hit 95 this week and 100 next week. So even though I usually don't ask people to subscribe for this week only, and maybe next week as well. If you like what I do here, please hit that subscribe button and uh, help me make my goal this week. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Thanks to all of you who watched until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe 